Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with slow cooker beef pot roast. That's right, I got so many requests for slow cooker recipes, I finally went and found and dusted off my slow cooker, and we're gonna use it to make a beautiful beef pot roast. So here we go. So what we're gonna use here is what's called a seven bone chuck roast. All right, you see that bone kind of makes the shape of a seven? That's where it gets its name. All right, if you turn it upside down, you have what they call an L roast. All right, I just made that part up. So once you get your seven bone roast, you're gonna go ahead and season both sides very generously with salt and pepper. All right, it looks like a lot, but that's a big thick piece of meat. All right, so season generously. Then I want you to coat both sides with white flour. Okay, just regular all-purpose flour. I want you to sprinkle it on and I want you to pat it into that meat really well. Okay, in the industry, this is known as spanking in the flour. And there's no way I would just make up a term like that to, you know, make you sound ridiculous in front of a chef one day. It's just not my style. All right, so you're going to spank in the flour until it's well coated, shake off the excess. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sear this meat really well on both sides. I'm going to put a large, large skillet on medium high heat with a couple tablespoons of vegetable oil. And when the oil starts to shimmer and it's hot, we're going to go ahead and sear that on both sides. Now you want a really nice brown crust on this. So there's two ways you can tell. The second best way is look for the blood, the juice coming up to the surface, or just look underneath, that's the best way. If it's brown, turn it over. Now just because we're gonna use a slow cooker to cook this meat doesn't mean everything's just gonna get thrown into the pot. In fact, those slow cooker recipes where you just add everything to the crock pot and turn it on, those are not good. Those are more, what's the word for it? Stupid because you gotta still use the proper techniques, like browning the meat and caramelizing some of the vegetables, etc. And you see here, I have some quality, quality crustification. All right, so once my meat was very, very well seared on both sides, I removed that to a plate. I'm gonna turn it down to medium, and I'm gonna add some thickly sliced mushrooms and a chunk of butter. All right, so I'm gonna start sauteing those. Again, I'm on medium heat here. I gave them about a three or four minute head start. When they just started to brown lightly, I went ahead and I threw in a roughly chopped onion. Okay, this is gonna cook so long. Do not be worried about precision cutting. All right, just whack that thing up. So I'm gonna cook the mushrooms and the onions for about five minutes more until the onions start to turn translucent. All right, you definitely want some color on the edges of those mushrooms and onions. That's gonna help give the sauce a nice deep color. I'm gonna throw in a couple cloves of chopped garlic, give that another minute. All right, when it gets to that point, I'm gonna throw in a nice big tablespoon of flour, and that's gonna help thicken that gravy later. All right, stir that in, cook that for about a minute, and we're almost done here. I'm gonna go ahead and add about a tablespoon of tomato paste. I'm gonna caramelize that a little bit, just in the center of the pan, just for like a minute. All right, and at that point, we're gonna add our stock. Now, I use chicken broth. I know a lot of people use beef broth for this. I really think it comes out better with chicken. You're gonna get so much beef flavor from that giant hunk of beef we're gonna braise here that you don't really need it. So I like the lighter flavor profile of the chicken broth, up to you. All right, I'm gonna stir that in. As soon as that comes back to a simmer, it's gonna thicken up and then just turn it off. All right, so that's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place some celery and some carrots in the bottom of my crock pot. I'm gonna lay my gigantic seven bone roast on top. And yes, it's a very tight fit, but that's okay. That's gonna sort of shrink up and collapse as it cooks. So as long as you can get the lid on, you're okay. I'm gonna throw in some fresh herb. I have some rosemary and some thyme. I'm gonna dump over my onion and mushroom mixture, kind of poke everything down. And then the easy part, put on the lid, lock it down, put it on high. And you're talking about five or six hours. Okay, basically you want it to be fork tender. All right, so this was me after about two hours. It was starting to kind of shrink up a little bit. A little bit of juice, liquid was coming out of the vegetables. All right, so check it every few hours, poke it down a little bit. Eventually it's gonna look like this. You're gonna have fat pooling up at the top. Always, just like if we're braising this on the stove. You wanna go ahead and skim off any fat that comes up. You can do that continually throughout the cooking. Eventually the bones are gonna release and you can pull out the bones with your tongs and that will give you more room, all right? And eventually it's gonna be completely falling off the bone and fork tender and you are pretty much done. You can try, but you really can't screw up a pot roast in a slow cooker. As long as you let it cook long enough, you're good to go. 
All right. Now, some people pull out the meat like this in these big chunks and they try to slice it. Why would you bother? Just break off hunks of meat and serve that. Just grab a couple chunks, throw it on some mashed potatoes, ladle over that amazing gravy and those braising vegetables, celery, onions, carrots, those mushrooms. And by the way, I believe I've trained you to the point where you know you needed to taste that sauce and adjust for salt and pepper, right? It probably needs another pinch or two of salt, maybe a grind of pepper, all right, maybe even a shake of cayenne. You know how we like it. Maybe you'll brighten it up a little bit with some chopped fresh parsley, optional. And there we go, a beautiful seven bone beef pot roast, so delicious. You know that song by George Thurgood, Bad to the Bone? This is the opposite of that song. So I hope you give it a try. It's really, really nice way to use a slow cooker. Anyway, you can head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more information, as usual. And as always, enjoy.